Today on Faces of Florence, Michelle Byers Brown. United Way. We've all heard of United Way, but Michelle tells us why United Way of Florence County is a truly local treasure. Hey, welcome. We're so glad you found us. Radio Free is a 24-hour Christian mix radio station broadcasting right here out of Florence, South Carolina. So when you're driving around town, remember to tune it in to 92.5. And if you're outside of the Florence area, you can listen 24 hours a day at radiofree.cc. This is Faces of Florence. Uh, Faces of Florence is the brand new show. It's a production of Radio Free. And the idea here at Faces of Florence is just to get to know some of our neighbors. Some, I always say interesting and important neighbors here in Florence. And today, our interesting and important neighbor is Michelle Byers Brown. Hey, Michelle. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, the what, what, what you're here for is to talk to us about United Way. Yes. Um, but I usually like to start these interviews with just a little bit of a get to know you kind of thing. Okay. Um, I think it's important. You know, where we work is not who we are. You know what I'm saying? And so, exactly. so let's get to know you a little bit to begin with. Okay. So you were born. I actually where? was born about an hour north of Atlanta. Okay. And moved to the PD the first time about 30 years ago. Okay. And actually left, had a choice to come back, and then had to let job took elsewhere, and finally came back in 2010 and decided this was home. And that's interesting. I said, that's this, interesting. this is it. And my, you know, my children feel like this is, they've never lived anywhere else and this is where they're from. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. I've moved in and out uh, as well and, and just landed here for, for whatever reason, you know. Right. I always tell people it's the place that has the most people I love the most. Yeah. So here, we, here we are, you know. Um, but, but Florence is a special place. And so tell me a little bit about when you first got settled into Florence and you decided this is where you were. What were you doing for work? Um, I actually was a stay-at-home mom. Okay. The, the most important job of Volunteering, doing a lot of volunteer work, um, involved in, you know, some community um, events around town and getting to know people that way. And it just segued into when my I was, my youngest was getting ready to go into high school and I decided to go back into the workforce. And fortunately, I was able to um, meet some wonderful people and start slowly and work part-time. And I had spent a few years working in the hospice industry, and that was a very big challenge. Yeah, that sure. was. Wow. But it was a wonderful, amazing job. And I, almost a year ago, was offered the opportunity to come to work with United Way, and I jumped at that opportunity because it gave me just a clear way to be involved and give back to our community directly. Because well, you, that's so important. It is, and and obviously you have a servant's heart. Um, that sounds like all of mm-hmm. your endeavors have kind of pointed in that way. Mm-hmm. So, what about United Way specifically made you so excited to to take this position? Well, when I learned, I actually had to do my own research about United Way because it was something I knew about, but I didn't know about until I dug into it and I realized that United Ways operate independently and they're a reflection of the communities in which they are in. I think and that's a misconception. I think a lot of people think it's some global exactly. thing. Exactly. It's like we're, you know, it's somewhere in Timbuktu. Yeah. But no, every dollar that we um, raise and allocate out to our 22 nonprofit partner agencies in Florence County, and we serve Florence County only, stays in Florence County. We don't send money off to organizations somewhere else. And so it is a truly a reflection of this community and what the heart of the community is. And through those 22 nonprofit agencies, partner agencies, were able to fund 30 programs. And the impact in our own community, particularly this year, could we ever have imagined the impact that would be needed and how much the help that that our community would need this year? Well, I think you you hit the nail on the head with, at least for me, with the knowing United Way, but not really knowing United Way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see that logo everywhere. It, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a national uh, movement, right. but I didn't really know much about it either. So I was really excited to, to get you in here and 
you know, help all of us who are, you know, have maybe some questions about right. it. So let's start with maybe um, your your mission statement at, at United Way. Do you have something you can kind of boil we, down for we us? We really, our goal is to build this community stronger and better and to be able to fill in the gaps for all of our citizens. I mean, we just, that that's the goal. And um, there's nothing more fulfilling than yeah. being able to be yeah. just a tiny part of that. Yeah. And we're very excited about the direction that United Way is going in. Um, we just recently um, put in, we had had an interim president, and we now have a new president, and she's um, local as well, nice. Cameron Packett. And we're excited about her being with us um, for many years to come and kind of driving the team. It's just been, it's going to be a great thing. Um, but the mission is just to build this community to make us um, sustainable. It's not just about helping people, but it's about keeping them going and teaching mm-hmm. them and um, funding these agencies that we have in town that do such a great job with helping our people and giving them that hand up. Yeah, yeah. And sustainable is is what a great word, you know, because mm-hmm. we, it's not a, like a hand out, like you said, it's right. a hand up. It's a hand up. And... Um, Let's talk about then maybe some of these organizations. Well, one of the things you said just a minute ago about being uh, filling in the gaps mm-hmm. is really resonates with me because I think that you know we're a nonprofit as well, and there's a lot of like kind of niche avenues there are. for and 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 that's okay, right? But there's a lot of missing pieces if you look along, you know, all of those different things, and you guys. I guess, focus on that and say, okay, how can we get in there and fill in those gaps? Right. That's so exciting. It is. It's really important to, we find one, one of our directions that we are moving is trying to get all the non on all the nonprofits, whether our partner agencies or just other nonprofits communicating with each other more mm. so that services are not duplicated. There you go. Right. I mean, there are so many great organizations that do great work, but if you do X, very well, you should be doing X. Yeah, right. And if another organization does Z very well, they should be doing that. And so um, filling in the gaps right now means it's very literal for a lot of families. Uh, as um, COVID-19 has been, as we're all tired of talking about it, but yeah. it's been a huge factor for so many families. Sure. And our agencies that help with rental assistance and you know, utilities and even, you know, food needs, they have been called into overtime and, mm-hmm. and, you know, even in Mercy Medicine, we work with them and they are, you know, it's been overtime for all of them all year, yeah. you know, because they don't get to stop because right. we have a pand- pandemic. Oh, what a tough time. But thank God for the United Way. Um, well, why don't you maybe lay out a scenario for us, maybe something that you see sort of on a regular basis, um, a family that's in need. Maybe tell us like what those needs look like, and then what are some of the partner organizations that serve? Well, I'll tell you, one thing that we do at United Way that's a boots-on-the-ground effort is we have our 211 number. And okay. um, when anyone in Florence County is in need, they can pick up the phone and they can dial 211, and they'll be connected to a person 24-7, it's confidential, it's free, and that person will direct them to our partner agencies or other resources in the community, and because until you need the help, yeah, you don't yeah. know where to go. Right, right. And emergencies don't generally happen on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. They happen on, you know, 1 a.m. on Sunday, and, and until you're the, in the situation that you need that help, you often don't know where to call. So for us at United Way, our 211 initiative is huge in connecting those individuals that need help with the agencies that that provide that help or other assistance. Um, We often have people call our office as well, and we will direct them to one of our partner agencies that provides the services that they're looking for. We've also just, um, well, we're in the middle of, I say, say just started, but we're in the middle of the VITA program, which has been a program that's allowed us to do taxes for um, elderly and um, economically challenged families um, for free free of charge. Mm -hmm. And that's been a really um, great program. It has been, we've just had a phenomenal response to that as well. 
So those are two of our, boot, when I say boots on the ground, those are the things that we do as direct initiatives in the community. This is United Way. Doing United it. Way does yeah, it, yeah. yes, as well. The 211 thing, I've never heard of that. And I mean, most people don't. You've heard of 911. Right, You've right. probably heard of 411. Mm-hmm, right. But you can dial 211 anywhere in Florence County, or you can go on the web. It's www.sc211.org and get information as well. Um and it's just, I think it's one of the greatest programs that we have because it offers help because so many times you might not, you might know me, but you might not ask me for help. Right, right. But you might call 211 and ask for help. Right, right. That's what that's for. You're yes. my friend, but this is yeah, actually for exactly. the help. And coworkers, you know, mm. and some of the businesses that have suffered, they've had to furlough employees or they've mm. had to close. We have seen a surge in calls to two one one this year. Really, and it's been a it has been a benefit um, for the businesses that know about it for those employees. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so those are that's United Way directly. Mm-hmm. Yes, and um, you guys are obviously doing that. Those are that's a special thing, especially the tax stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it's, another it's great been, need, right? Exactly, and things are complicated, and and mm-hmm. not everyone's um, computer savvy or feels comfortable doing it on Numbers the computer. Numbers make my brain go crazy right. a little bit. So yeah, I, so I feel, it's, been, I feel it's been a really good thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well then, all right. So that's the stuff that you guys do directly. Let's talk about partnering with other agencies. Mm-hmm. I've done some work with you in the past, so I yes. know some of this, um, but if you could maybe describe for the average viewer, right. what, what maybe some of the, some of the partner agencies that you guys um, work with on a regular basis. Right. Well, we work, for, we work with 22 agencies and we fund those agencies and their program and their initiatives. It, you know, it's, it's things like um, Lighthouse Ministries. We have, you know, obviously we get a lot of calls and we work closely with Lighthouse Ministries because Lighthouse Ministries gives a hand up to, to families that are in need as well with um, assistance in, in housing and um, food and, you know, really helping families learn to budget and move forward. The Salvation Army is another great partner that we have. Um, we also partner with Foster Care Closet of Florence. A lot of oh, people don't yeah. even realize there is a foster care closet, but it's a great um, service. If you decide to become a foster parent, you don't know when you're going to get a child. And it, that call may come at 3 in the morning, and it may be a 3-month-old baby, and 3-month-old babies need lots of things. Right, right. So, you know, foster parents can go in and, get their supplies there. We work with the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the B- Boys and Girls Club, mm-hmm. the YMCA, um, Harvest Hope. Uh, some of our, one of our new agencies this year was Tenacious Grace, which does a wonderful ministry with helping women that have been incarcerated regain their lives and regain themselves. Yeah, we love Tenacious Grace here at Radio Exactly. Free. I mean, it's just, it's, it's one of my favorite, favorite um, organizations. Um, of course, Mercy Medicine. You know, we all know that medical care is something that none of us should be denied, and um, it's the most basic it, of needs. And really. it's and yeah. it's not just medical; they also do dental care, yeah. and a lot of people don't know that. Um, but it is a very basic need. PD Coalition, of course, they have mm. so many programs that they do throughout the um, community. Naomi's Project is another one who also reaches out, and um, this year, those agencies have been challenged because with people under a lot of stress, domestic violence has risen, mm-hmm. and um, so they've needed. Yeah, they've been a needed agency. Both of those agencies have been needed very much. All right. Well, then let's talk about the the way you guys operate. Um, this is fascinating to me because you guys really are an umbrella organization, mm-hmm. and you you are. Always have feelers out in the in the community, yes. and you're looking for ways to help. Say uh, someone's watching and they're like, "I want to be a part of this." Um, how's that work? Well, the best way to support United Way is to give to United Way so that we can fund these programs and these agencies. And when you fund, when you give to United Way, you can feel very confident that your money's going where it's supposed to go, because we have a team of business people who volunteer their time, and it's lots of hours, yeah. to make sure the um, agencies that apply for funding are actually using that money in effective ways. We go out and visit with them quarterly also as well to touch base 
and make sure that things are going well. And we're getting ready to go through that application process now. Uh, and so um, the staff's getting geared up for that. But that is the, the greatest way that someone can help United Way because together our donations and our support are much larger than when it's a single donation. It could do so much more. Another way is to advocate for United Way at, a work, at your workplace or, you know, inside your own business, possibly to run a workplace campaign or have your organization do a donation. Um, that's one of our main ways of raising money is through workplace campaigns. Describe that. What does it look like? Um, that's when we will go in to an organization, big or small, and do a presentation about what United Way is so they fully understand right. all that we do and all, where their money is, and that if they decide to donate to United Way, they can also designate their money to any 5013C. Oh. doesn't have to be one of our partner agencies. Interesting. It can also be another United Way if they're, say, from North Carolina and they want to donate and they can donate through us and designate it to wow, okay. their area. So um, when you're doing the workplace campaigns, people have an option to donate or they can have a certain amount taken from their paycheck, a withdrawal at a, you know whatever interval they choose. And um, that's always a nice little benefit because, you know, it's pre-tax. And, yeah, 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 so it's a go. good benefit that's there. That's always but, good. Um, lots of our workplace campaign folks do um, a lot of fun and motivating activities throughout the year as well. Um, we've had some that'll do chili cook-offs and, you know, kind of get a competitive spirit going. Yeah. But that is one of our main drivers for raising money. And speaking of that, this year has been a challenge because, yeah. you know, things have been closed and people have not wanted necessarily – gatherings. Yeah, right, you can't right. have people together. Real. But the workplace campaign is a huge way to help United Way. And so for someone to advocate and you know advocate for United Way in their workplace. All right. And all that information for someone who's watching right now is like, I want to I want to do one of those. All that information is on the website? Yes, it is. And our website is www.uwflorence.org. And on that website you will find all of our partner agencies and how to contact them. You will find how to give. You can log right onto the website and give if you right like. Right there on the website. You will find our phone number, which is 843-662-2407. And you can always call us if you want to bypass all of all the other. And um, if you did want to do a campaign of any kind at your church, your club, your workplace, um, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to come over. I would, you know, be there to support you as much as you'll let me be there and to help you um, build a strong campaign. Well, let's uh, let's sort of land the plane now with um, maybe can you tell me some, some of the your favorite uh, experiences that you've had? You, like I said, you've only been on the job here about a year, um, and I know you've seen a lot of stuff go down. Just a little bit that we've yeah. interacted, there's yeah. been some amazing things. We but. really have. Um, well, I know last year when we were doing our campaign video, which people can see on our website, um, we got to follow um, the volunteers mm. from the Senior Citizens Association. That was amazing to see the faces light up for these volunteers that are delivering Meals on Wheels to these senior citizens when many times it's more about the face at the door than the meal mm. that they're giving. Mm. And that was huge. It's a big deal. It really was. And um, sitting in with Tenacious Grace and seeing a little bit of what they do was, you know, overwhelming. Yeah. I think we all felt that way after we left there. But I can't think of an agency that doesn't do amazing things. Yeah. Uh, children's cancer providers that we work with, mm. they come in and help families with the tiny, tiniest of needs. But when your child is sick, that tiny need is huge. Massive. Yep. I mean, they swoop in and they uh, meet those needs. So, I guess the great blessing of my job is that I get to, to hear about these things and see them directly and see all the great things that our agencies do in the community. Well, and we also have Dave Caring. Oh, if let's you're talk familiar about with that. that. That's in September, and corporations join in, they come in, and they go out to the nonprofits in the community, and sometimes they paint, sometimes they landscape. Uh, they do all kinds of projects that need to be done that always seem to need to be done, but yeah. there's not necessarily money to do it. 
and we're really we're really thankful for those those organizations. So they just partner up with you guys. They do, and, say, and they pick a charity and a project. This year, we did a lot of supply drives because mm. we couldn't go into a lot of places. Yeah, but it still was a fantastically successful day of caring. And that is on the calendar for September. September, yes. Okay, all right. That's it'll be up. in September. So anyone who's interested, call us. We'll get your we'll get you on the on the list to do that. And it's just a really fun day to be with other people and just seeing seeing the work actually happen. I find that caring when you care in community, it, it's like exponential. You know, like you really feed off of each other mm-hmm. if uh, if we're all partnering together to do uh, an act of caring like that. So so cool that you guys facilitate that sort of thing. Well, we will put all of that information along with this video, okay, links, phone numbers, the whole nine Fantastic. yards. And we'd love to have you guys come back on maybe some kind of regular basis, maybe before the day of caring. Maybe come. That would in be and great. We would love to do that. that. And um, we'll be kicking off our campaign, our next campaign. Um, in July. We're still running the campaign now currently. So we would love to have anybody that would want to join in with us to give us a call and we'll get them connected. So we'll, well give you all the information you need. Well, let's uh, let's end on that. Describe what the campaign is, just so someone's knowing, like, how, how does that work? Well, our campaign is we launch our campaign so that we'll be able to fund the agencies that we fund. Last year, we gave out over $850,000 wow. to fund the 22 nonprofits that we, right we have partnered with. Area. Yes. And that is not just, it doesn't stop there. There are 30 projects that came out of that. Mm. We also provide funding for other organizations that have come to us that aren't our partner agencies. Mana House came to us a few months ago and they had an issue with the stove and we were fortunate enough to be able to help them with that because wow. they can't be without a stove. Right, right. Wow. So, you know, it just doesn't stop with a list of agencies. So the campaign is basically just like the 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 full idea for the year. It is and last year we kicked off a little bit of a different direction. We said um, live give help local because the biggest thing like we started off talking that people don't realize that their money stays here. And my goal is to make everybody know that we are local and everything we do is for this community, to better this community and build it. We're going to end it right there. That's beautiful. That's, that's what we believe in right here at Radio Free. So, Michelle Byers-Brown, thank you so much thank you. for doing what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you.